when Pep Guardiola come in, he moved the EDS from that building over to the academy building. So now mm. it's just a first team center. So it's one of them that I understand where Pep's coming from because he needs his like his group and focus on everything what he has in the building in it. But Patrick always had it in like we'd always look up to who we have and kind of see how they're eating, see how they're preparing to go out to train in the gym and things. So I was a bit I was pretty upset to be fair when we moved over to the other side of the building, but it's um the facility is crazy bro. Going backwards now, again to Man City, um, like you said before, you were there when, you know, Man City was not the uh, shape kind of empire type um, place, right? So how yeah. did you, how, how did you, well, how did you perceive Man City when you went into the club? Um, you know, being, you're from the city and everything like that, were you just really so happy to even play for a big team anyway, regardless, and being in an academy. And um, how did you see it change throughout the years when you were there? Um, so when, obviously, I was first at City, it was at a place called um, Platt Lane, which we played years against. Yeah. Do you remember it? Yes, I remember. It was there, so that was quite, that was a really small like, academy, like, compared to other clubs like United and probably, like, Arsenal, where you was and stuff. So at the time, it was just, like, Obviously, it was normal to me because I didn't know any different. But looking back now, like what they have now, the kids that are growing up with the facilities they have, like if you can't make it with them facilities that you have and like the staff you have and things like that, it's crazy. Because we would have to say like one guy who would overlook us at City as an age group, whereas there's now there's like four or five people looking over the yeah. and have the so players basically have like one coach per like couple of players, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, the times have just changed massively, but it was probably the point where we moved to the CFA and realised how, like, the direction this club was going because when you walk into that new, that new um, academy, bro, it's just scary, like, it's hotels on site, there's swimming pools, there's, like, 16 pitches, there's got this own mini stadium on site, bro, it's just everything there that you need to have, like, top chefs, it's just crazy, man. Uh, what would you say is a, a kind of better, com complete uh, facility? St George's or would it be uh, that complex at Man City? Man City, bro. Oh, bro. Bro, it's crazy, bro. So, listen to this. When we first went, it was the first team in the EDS, the Italy Development Squad, in one building. So, this building is like a circular building. And then there's another building. And in between that is a pitch and an Asher turf that's like so there's one circle, pitch, Asher turf, and then another big circle, and another pitch that around the building. Makes sense. So we was with the first team because I was up with the EDS, so we eat and do things like that with them. So like when they we when they go out to train, we go out to train because you know it's good. Best, you have to go over right. So um it was just like basically mirroring the first team. So as a young lad, I was like 17, 18 at the time, and just like I was living like a first team, working at the same time, treating at the same time, things like that in the pool with them, stuff like that. So you get into like asking questions, and these players were like, bro, world class players, you know what I'm saying? These aren't like average players. This is crazy for me that I'm sat with, say, Vincent Company, Yaya Torres, we start having a conversation mm -hmm. after training in the swimming pool. When Pep Guardiola came in, he moved the EDS from that building over to the academy building. So now mm. it's just a first team center. So it's one of them that I understand where Pep's coming from because he needs his like his group and focus on everything what he has in the building in it. But Patrick always had it in like we'd always look up to who we have and can kind of see how they're eating, see how they're preparing to go out to train in the gym and things. So I was bit I was pretty upset to be fair when we moved over to the other side of the building. But it's um the facility is crazy bro. Yeah, um, do, do you know, um, you know, knowing a lot of players uh, still there, like Tossin and people like that, do you know if that actually, you know, impacted um, either the academy or being the 23 team or the first team that you guys moved or do you think it just didn't make a difference, to be honest? Um, well, for me personally, when I was there, I, I, I did find it did make a bit of a difference because, like, you had this, like, you want to be like them, you want to do everything like them, you want to mirror what they're doing, bro, like from the minute they get into who's staying after to do extras and things like that, which at a young age, you just want to get in and get out and go and see your boys and do what you're doing. Exactly. 
Mm. Say, for example, I'm going into training and I'm seeing like, who, who's a star player for City? Say, De Bruyne in the gym after Aguero. training. Aguero, yeah. If Aguero's in the gym after training or say in swimming pool doing legs, I'm going to want to do that. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I, I have to get to that level or so I want to get to that level. Whereas when you're on the other side of the building, you're kind of seeing you're the top of the building already. So you're the EDS and then there's 18s. You know how it goes because sometimes mm, as. Get sidetracked. You know, yeah, man, like, you, you, you don't look down on the 18s, but, like, there's no goal, like, there's no, you've already been there, done that, you kind of want to see that next step, you know what I'm saying? So, it's, um, yeah. I would say it's definitely a negative goal, but it's, I think for Pep, it's good, because obviously he has his people in one building, and he knows that he can walk about and not kind of have to speak to whoever he doesn't know, kind of thing. Yeah, um, staying on the, staying on that team, incredible team, um, talk to me and just tell me type of the things that you've seen like in terms of training wise and what players can do and just like who's the yeah I'm just gonna let you speak bro bro I could speak all day about him man like you're it's crazy like Uncle Yaya um, Guerrero Nazri Sterling Company De Bruyne David Silva bro these players like you know what it's like when you get to told you go and train with the first team, innit? Like, you, you're kind of mm. nervous, but you're so happy, and these are stars, man. You look up to since a kid, so at that point where you were just like sharing pictures with them, and that like, sometimes you just look into your side and thinking, yeah, yeah, Tory's there, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy, mm. man. But, um, bro, some special players, but I have to say, man, the best, I'd give a top three out of like, because obviously I've been there for a long time, and I'd say Vincent Company as a trainer was just like, Bro, mm. he was aggressive. Like, if, if he was on his team, you know you're not having a day off. Whereas, if, say, he was on, like, Otomendi's team, you could kind of chill, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? Companies on to you, you know what, whether it's me as a young kid or it's um, Dean McKellis as an experienced pro or whoever it would have been at the time. Mm. Bro, he was just on it, at it every day. And then the Brian special, like, bro, mm. I can't even explain some of the things that guy used to do. He was just like, Bro, <laughs> just out of this world like you understand why he's got to the level he's at kind of thing and then yeah. I would say David Silva's the best out of all of them bro. Yeah. Like, this guy a magician bro like made it look so easy like everything was just walk out to training and next week he's just like putting it in bins and chopping and turning and doing much things like, yeah no I, when, when I, I was watching something the other day with like Thierry Henry and Fabregas and the way they're talking about him was and that's them. They're like top of the top of the bunch, you know. So imagine it's awesome. like, you know what I mean? So um well I'm gonna ask you two questions. I'm gonna ask you uh, who was the hardest to compete against in the midfield, because you're a midfielder, um, for you, or like deeper midfielder. Um so you're probably facing like a lot of people attacking you and stuff like that. Um and then who do you think in your eyes was the most underrated where you were like raw I didn't know they were that good you know because you see something on you know on TV or you know from the outside looking in but these are real top quality prem players at the end of the day they just get overshadowed by world class players like Yaya Torre and De Bruyne and David Silva etc you know yeah so that question that you just said, then I would have to say, obviously now he's getting a recognition that he deserves, but Sterling, man, like when I was first time at, at City, not not mm. my first time, so when he first signed at City, like he was obviously coming for a prize tag and things like that, and people always like had something bad to say about the guy. Bro, he was the nicest guy I've ever met. Like as a young player going up to a first team as well, like you never have that feeling with players because sometimes like make it hard for you, innit? which is understandable because you're a young kid and you have to earn like your stripes kind of thing, innit? But, Sterling was just so like respectful and bro, I've been to that guy's house and stuff and just been like chilling like he's so cool it's unbelievable um, and on a foot like, back to your question like this guy was bro every training session he was at it like he's so quick powerful skillful can score he had everything man and that's why he's doing what he's doing now and he's classed in, like the top bracket now isn't it? tell people how strong he is that people don't know bro bro you see how small he is you see his legs Mad, yeah, bro. bro he's bro, he, he must eat some mad food. I never let me tell you, bro. He's good, man. Yeah, no. But obviously, I looked up to him growing up because we're from the mm. same area in London, and yeah, is it, like yeah? people. 
Yeah, yeah, exact same area. So like people don't know, um, people don't know how nice of a guy he is and just how good he is anyway. Like I know it's what about saying like if you compare Premier League to, you know, playing at uh, goals with your friends, but still, you know, we were not similar age, but well, he's two years older than me, but we were always playing like at goals or something together. And, um, mm. you know, these are with academy players as well. He's just looking like the best player there by miles. So, oh, and it's, it, in that, it's in that, like them situations where you realize how good players are in it. Like when it's not mm. like a game and you get to see him every day or like every other day when you play some football or whatever, and you see some of the things you do, you think, wow, like, yeah, how yeah. can you do that? Man. Yeah, and um, the other question I had was um, uh, the best midfielder who gave you the hardest time in midfield um, when you played against them. When I played against them, do you know what's mad? I actually played in against Leroy San in training. Oh, anytime you're gonna say Leroy San, yeah. Yeah, bro. I played against Leroy San in the UEFA Youth League. You know that competition? And played in that, um, and we had um, Schalke at home. And um, Leroy Sane was in the 10 and obviously I played holding midfield in it so I kind of had to like mark him but all the game plan was Patrick Ray was saying because he was like coach at the time he was like this kid is like special and he just come to me and said I need you to man mark him just like try and man mark him the whole game but I'm chasing this guy around man and he was just like bro so quick like it was yeah. just stupid but that's something that you just said that surprised me though he played as a, as a 10 yeah like people wouldn't yeah. Um, people wouldn't associate him with being um, somebody who can pick it up in pockets and turn and, you know, get things going and whatever. They would just associate him with being quick and running in straight lines. But, yeah, how was he in that game? He was special, bro. Like, like I said, Patrick was saying before the game, and for someone like Patrick to say that about a player, like normally he would just focus on us and, like, we're going out to win. He, we all said to each other, who's this kid? Because all they kept saying was, He's special, he's special, he's special, like in meetings and videos for the games. And then um, obviously we went out on the pitch and the guy was just like, bro. Like, I, like you just said, then you wouldn't expect him to be like, but I only knew him for a number 10 at that time. I didn't know how oh. he was going to be a winger, do you know what I'm saying? So at mm. that time, I'm playing for Schalke and he was just like, bro, technical, skillful, quick, powerful. You just, you know, when you see them players like this, that, that you know they're going to go to that level. Yeah, yeah. Special man, good player. For more content like this, like, share, and subscribe.